Welcome to the actual play with Justin More Fix. This is James. With me in this episode is Lacey, Carey, Holly, and Taffy. Hello. Hey. You can find us online at justmorefix.com or on Twitter at justmorefix. If you like us, you can support us at Patreon, and you can give us a rating and review at iTunes or wherever you find us at. In this episode, we're going to keep playing Night Witches. And now, it's time to get our gaming fix. about to listen to another episode of our night which is actual play these episodes include some mature content including the themes of war so you've been warned we rejoin our russian airwoman at Pashovskaya. they were sent there by the polititruck to do some investigation and try and raise the morale of the citizens there so without any further ado here is night witches i picture myself being very good with kids growing up in a building full of them with no parents right so I'm going to, like, you know, teach a group of children how to sing the 588th flight song, you okay, know, right our squadron yes, song, you, you know. Right on. <clears throat> Play cool game crutches. But, oh, I'm an anti-aircraft gun. Dodge me. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> Fly around like little planes. It'll be fun. Right on. <laughs> Very good. I like kids. <laughs> So, Yuri's going to be so happy when he gets back. They're happy, little people. What's that? <laughs> what did you say? I said Yuri's going to be so happy when he gets back. <laughs> yeah, mom in training. Oh. <laughs> so what about the rest of you guys? Is there anything specific that you guys want to try and uh, do while you're sort of stuck out here or no? I'll just mingle with, like, the townsfolk and the children and not answer questions like I have any. And I don't uh-huh. know. I won't Are we to, even, like, like free reign? No, not exactly. Kind of. Yes. Kind of. No. Um, so before they sort of cut you loose, actually, I forgot I should specify. Sveta will sort of have you guys sort of clustered up as you're getting off the truck. And she says, if you see any suspicious activity among the people here, please uh, remember their faces and let us know right away. Uh, people that ask too many questions, that kind of stuff. People anyone that you German. think might. Yes. Anyone that speaks German. <laughs> Anyone that you think might, <laughs> just anybody that seems suspicious that, you know, might have uh, German sympathies and oh. whatnot. No, I see right here. Hmm. Somebody speaks German. That's a good, good task. <laughs> Maybe. Sprich uh, Deutsch? Sprich Deutsch? Ah, it's that one right there. Yes. It's, it's the, the Vera one. Yeah. <laughs> Six-year-old just said, Gesundheit when I sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go into town and just talk to people and be very charismatic and over the top and happy. I even put on lipstick before okay. I came. That's why I asked if lipstick existed. Um, flirty, polite, talking to young people, trying to encourage people to enlist. Okay. And listening. Regaling everyone with I want tale to hear how you flew with Marina. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what I have done already. <laughs> this is what the army of lost. Do you know the hero Marina? Oh, no. This is 43. <laughs> what is she dead? This is the year. Oh, <laughs> I don't know that. Anyway, just over. The, if I can linger into a bar and get bought a beverage, I will allow it. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. A, it was an accident. Right. They wanted to buy a hero a beverage. It happened. <laughs> I'm probably gonna stick pretty close to her, so I'll hang out and make sure she doesn't get hurt because I feel responsible. And this is the next nearest village to where our... It's the actual city right next to okay. the uh, the air ba- airfield or whatever. So while we're talking to people, I'm going to be kind of looking around, storing any useful information like as to what shops were near and like uh, things that could be useful later in case we need to go into town for okay. anything to scrounge. Oh, very good. Right on. So go ahead and roll me an eyeball then. I like that. Right on. I'm so unuseful. <laughs> Whatever. I'm coming uh, back around the corner. Seven. So on a seven, uh, hold, choose one. Or at what's hold one. So you can, you can ask now or you can wait. Um, after I look around, I'll notice that people, like, um, maybe I'm being a little bit too, I'm not being sneaky enough. Uh-huh. So I'll, I'll stop. Okay. Like directly looking at stores and kind of like, you know, gawking. I'll just take more on the down low. Okay. So that people don't notice that I'm like. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll observe more quietly. So, because I've noticed that people are like watching me, watching. Okay. Does that work? We can, uh, since you don't, you don't have to ask the question now. You can hold it for later. But since you mentioned scrounging, like specifically for that, if you want to note that you ha- you've held one somewhere, okay. that when you comes to making a scrounge roll, if you want to say that there was a place that you saw 
okay. know what I'm saying, in mm-hmm. the town that was like this kind of a whatever. It's the Sprocket store or okay. whatever the hell it is. I don't know. You know what I mean? You know, Steely Sprockets. <laughs> right. And then that counts. You can take plus one forward on whatever that role is that okay. involves that spe- specific store. But it's a pretty, pretty uh, good use of. Uh, any kind of contraband or anything that you might need. So, like, I don't like this idea of being <laughs> right. political agents, but I will participate because this is what is expected of us. So, like, kids are founts of information. They pay attention to everything Ooh. and nobody expects anything of them. Right. Ooh. So I'll just ask them, ah. like, is anybody acting weird, you know? Anybody moved here recently that wasn't your neighbor before? <laughs> you That's know, a good idea. That kind of thing. <laughs> right on. So... That's totally acting like a natural born Soviet woman, She's right? Genius. This is why we all have respect for Yulia on our show. <laughs> <Right? laughs> <That's right. laughs> exactly. Um, I I'm kind of in between two things. I'm I think we could do this as an eyeball. But the skin commander says, snark on your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I also think this might be like an act up in that with the the Soviet airwoman thing, like you, you know, you're this. there, you're in uniform. You know, good Russian people that that you know spiel. Mm-hmm. So I think you could make an argument either way. I think it seems more like acting out to me. Okay, <laughs> I agree. It's, it's yeah, I'm I, not like reaching out compassionately. No, or no, 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 yeah, no, no. I was saying, well, it's because between act up and eyeball. Oh, okay. but I think that you're being more pro- like eyeball is watching as, and I feel like act up is more proactive, which is what you're doing. Does that seem fair? Mm-hmm. Okay, so go ahead and roll me uh, roll plus medals as you act like a natural born Soviet airwoman. Got a nine. Pretty good. So choose one. I uh, will make someone do what I want. So even if they don't have information now, okay. like if they find something out, like these kids will seek me out specifically. Good call. Or if they have something now, that's great too. Whichever you want to do. <laughs> Whatever you like. No, I think I like waiting on it a little bit. Like you sort of do your artillery game and then you sort of talk about a mission and then you're like... I'm talking you about know, how bad the Nazis are. Right, all that kind of <laughs> the stuff. Nazis. And then you sort Here's of... your mission, guys. Right, close with... <laughs> exactly, this is your so mission. So now you little sparrows. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> might be on your playbook. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, so I think, no, I think that's something I would... Unless you want it to happen, trigger it now, maybe. I think that would no, be cool if it sort of came up later. Very good. I'm back and forth because like, you're talking about like schmoozing and going out there and that kind of stuff. And I feel like in a way that's acting like a lady maybe because you're trying to be like friendly. Like you're not invoking your Sovietness when you do it. You know what I mean? No, I'm not. And, I'm absolutely not. I'm uh, wearing my medal. Right, I'm yeah, wearing yeah. my full dress. Right. But I'm acting like a lady because okay. I want to invoke that feeling that you guys could be this. Right. Not the feeling that I am this aspires to meet me. It's right. no, I'm you, but I'm also doing my duty. Right. So go ahead and roll plus guts. Nine. Very good. So choose one. I'm not really sure what to do right now. I would like to add one to the mission pool, whether that's because I found out some information. But well, it I'm also, also just like... You guys feel uplifted from doing this. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a moment to go back and mingle with regular people, remind you of home, what you're fighting for. It could, it could, the mission pool part could, could come from a lot of different things. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, like, specifically information about your next mission. It could just be, our spirits are high, we feel good. Or I could pick, make someone do what you want, and someone's mm-hmm. like, hey, let me buy you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good either way. <laughs> I'm going to go with make someone do what you want. I want to have fun while I'm here. Okay. And if somebody just so happens to buy me a drink, I'm okay with that. Okay. So I think that it, yeah, like you're... And I feel like I can, might be able to hear more secrets in a bar. Okay. So you uh, are going to, you know, talk to some people and then they offer, you know, there's a place or whatever. And, uh, you go have a few drinks or whatever. And are you... Trying to stay in control of the situation, or are you just gonna party hardy? Stay in control. It's it's almost evening. I still have to repair the ships, and okay, I still good. have to fly tonight. I am not partying. Okay, very good. I just I want to have a drink. I want to celebrate my victory without it being something I'm hiding, and I want to listen to what these people have to say. What's okay. going on? Very good. Oh, I'd be so bad if I didn't stay in control. <laughs> um, Galia. Galia is kind of a mess right now because she sent that letter. So she's really nervous about what's going to happen with mm-hmm. that. She's also feeling extremely guilty that Yulia totally saved her life and got super injured. And so, like, I want to stay really close to her, 
but I also want to help these people and like kind of like put myself out there a little bit. Right. So I think she's going to kind of try and talk to people a little bit and like be very friendly, but try to like reach out to to actively find out like any information, like if <laughs> if anybody is, you know, being strange that, right. you know, that's something that's very important that, you know, we need like people need to know because these are our people that we're protecting every day. Mm-hmm. Right kind of thing. So, uh, I'm not sure what to go with. I think... More chile? Oh, <laughs> cheese tray. You can't walk in with a tray full of cheese and say, don't mind me. <laughs> 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 we all notice. So, how do, how do you see this whole thing playing out? Like, if you had to sort of narrow down the entire moment you guys are down here, because you're going to spend uh, several hours yeah. here, right? If you had to sort of, like, distill that down into, like, one montage moment or scene, what would that look like? So, basically, mostly I was staying with her a lot while she was, like, hanging out with the kids and uh-huh. everything like that. Eventually, I'm going to make my way away. And maybe I see some, like, some men working on, like, a car. And so, since we're used to repairing planes, right. I will go to offer, you know, oh, my... Okay. Assistance because I'm I'm good at repairing uh-huh. planes. Maybe there's something I can help with. I also have smaller hands than them. Maybe there's something <laughs> I can get to. Right on. And uh, you know, help you. So you know. I think that you're, I think that's acting oh, like a hooligan. Really? Well, it's definitely not acting like a lady. That's true. Right. Yeah. And well, I suppose you mentioned you guys repair planes and yeah. whatnot. So I think it you could. So maybe I'm gonna actually go and like kind of introduce <laughs> myself, yeah. kind of cut. Cut up with them a little right, bit, right, you right. know, joke around with them and uh, be like, oh, well, you know, we work on planes. Maybe I can, you know, take a look right, and right. help you out a little bit. And they're like, oh, you're a lady. So right, what are right. you going to do? And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> I'm going to do, I'll show you what I can do. I'm going to fix your shit. Okay. So I guess it kind of depends on how you spin this for which one I kind of lean towards. If you're like, you know, you think I don't know shit because I'm a lady, but I'm going to show you what's up. Yeah. Then that's, that's sort of acting like a hooligan, right? But if you're like... Your lady, you don't know how to fix shit, and you're like, uh, I work on airplanes that that bring death to Hitlerite dogs. I'll show you what's up, right? Yeah. Which of that would be acting like a Soviet air woman? Do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. one is like, I learned how to do this serving my country. Yeah. And the other one is just like, I know how to do this. Get out the way. Do you know I, what I mean? I've been a little more cocky lately, so I'm thinking that the... Acting like a hooligan would okay. probably fit a little more because I've been like, yeah, well, I'm, look, I'm turning around and bomb your shit twice. What's up? <laughs> Do something. Right on. Right on. So go ahead and roll plus luck then. Okay. <laughs> I'll bomb your shit twice. What's up? <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Oh, right on. Boom. So choose two. Woohoo! She's really good at the what's up. I guess. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and add two to the mission pool. And then maybe like I go and I totally fix their shit and they're like, holy crap, you guys are awesome. Be like, that's what it is to be a Soviet air woman. That is what's up. All right. So, uh, I think that there are a, this small cluster of men that were around either watching or that may have been drawn in by what was happening Mm -hmm. are really impressed. They're like, all right, well, uh. And I'm Dang. damaged. Look, yeah. bandage on the head. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they are they are sort of like, my bad, I'll shut up. They they walk it back. You know, a moment of uh of surprise and respect or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you okay. And then I'll cut Fair up enough. a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, as long as, you know, yeah. Sveta's not near. <laughs> <laughs> Is so. it safe to say that we could significantly impress Victor since he's tied to me and uh Galia anyway, kind of following us everywhere in charge of us. I think so, yeah. Can he see us doing this and be like, dang, (laughs) ma'am. I think so. That will sort of, this, uh, You at a certain point, you guys are like dragging ass. Yeah. Like tired, run down, and they sort of gather everybody back up, send you, you know, load everybody back up in the trucks. It's going to be that moment to head head back, basically. As we're heading back, is there anybody that is... Like running off to go inform someone that we're leaving. No, I don't. Okay. You know, it's not that that overt. I don't think. Would we have time to like stop into a shop or something you wanted to? Or... I think so. Okay, so I, I will have done that. I will have popped into a, one of the shops while okay. we were in town just to buy a few things. What is it you're looking to pick up? I'm gonna go to a bakery. I'm okay. gonna buy some little pastries, and I'm going to like for everyone in our tent because okay. I'm trying to unify us. And, like, right, right, right. <laughs> like make okay, every. Cool. I, I'm gonna buy a treat for everyone to okay. try to like. I think there's this moment where you sort of like have them sort of like stuffed in your jacket or whatever. Yeah, I'm you know, trying to hide them. <laughs> right. How, right. But yeah. Very good. Very good. All right. So you guys are loading back up into the uh, trucks. 
you know, Sveta is making sure that everybody is present and accounted for and all that. Vera, when you go to climb up into the truck, she will stop you for a minute and she looks at you and then she like like as you're like she grabs your arm like as you're getting you know, cause like you got to climb up mm-hmm. into the truck and as you're reaching up she stops she like grabs your arm for a minute and she looks at you with that sort of steely politruck gaze that they have you know and then she lets you go and says in the truck and then she'll climb up in there with the rest of you guys and it is a drive back and then your letter will be delivered uh, while you guys are away. Senior Lieutenant Petrova, I know we've had a few moments of truthful understanding. Because of this, I respectfully ask a major kindness if you could find any way to please find out any information about Sar- uh, Sergeant Yuri. It's information for a friend. I know this is not a recommended act for a good Soviet airwoman, and I know this could get me in trouble, but if you could please find out any information, I would appreciate it. Um, please let me know, and I will absolutely owe you. Um, I know you understand how stressful this all is, and anything you can find out is greatly appreciated. Thank you with much adoration and respect, Galia. Aww. Okay, so you guys will arrive back at the base. They cut you guys, you know, they get you guys off of the off of the trucks, and they sort of cut you loose, and they tell you that everybody did a good job today. You can go about your regular business of the day, and uh, missions come tonight. So, I'm gonna if, go talk to our regimental commander. Okay, that is oh, her mom's a bear. Major Bershinskaya. Her mom's a bear. Her dad's a sky. <laughs> what? <laughs> bear. I feel Skaya. like her dad should be the bear, and her mom should be the sky. Sky bear. <laughs> The bear touched the sky, got pregnant, and birthed. Oh, Major well, that's bear. better than what I was thinking. I was thinking more about the creation of the stars, but let's not worry about that. <laughs> if the dad's the sky. <laughs> yeah, right. And, the stars and you have born. light. Rocket man. <laughs> All right, so you will arrive at the command uh, tent, and uh, and inside you will see Bereshinskaya, Senior Lieutenant Petrova, and Captain Lobodeva, the Chief of Staff, and they will all be inside there. Okay, I will. Uh... So they'll wave you in. <clears throat> so sorry. actually, it's Senior mm-hmm. Lieutenant Petrova will wave you in. She, uh, you know, like you salute and and uh, she'll return. You know, the he tells you uh, at ease what's what's on your mind. Lieutenant. Mm-hmm. Uh, in all the time I have served, uh, I'm sure you know I've never been one to shy away from a mission, a battle, or anything. Okay. Um, however, both myself and another one of our squadron mates is seriously injured. We have two planes that are damaged um, that we didn't have time to repair because of today's festivities. I would like to have a night off to rest, recuperate, and repair our planes. So she'll sit back. This is Varsakova, right? Or, I mean, uh... Well, I mean, they're both there. Right, so she sits back. Petrova and Bersinskaya are both in there. So Petrova will sort of look over at Bersinskaya and Lobodeva, and uh, they sort of all share meaningful glances back and forth at one another. And I think, uh... Go ahead and roll a, um... Act up, uh, plus medals. Got an 11. So choose two. I can guess what they are. I would like to make somebody do what I want. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to add one to our mission pool. I feel like a day off would add one to our mission pool. Okay. Don't you don't really want to have no consequences? No, nah, fuck that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Give whatever consequences you want. We need time. So when you're asking for this, are you basically, in, like... I kind of have the understanding now that everybody in that tent is part of your section, Mm -hmm. like to rotate pilots with or whatever, you know, you're asking for the the entire section or just for you guys is my question. Like not just the four of us, like the entire squadron. Okay. okay. Or is it squadron? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Squadron. That's what I meant. It's my squadron, my section. I think it is section. Oh, okay. Either way, it's okay. I know what you mean though. So Lobodeva, the chief of staff, will come walking over towards you and she like sort of leans back on the desk or whatever and says every other section 
has a similar sob, sob story. So why is it that you guys or that, that your section is any different than anyone else's? You can give us all the day off if you like. We went out and did Polititruck business during the day, so maybe we should get to sleep at night. <laughs> so they kind of roll their eyes when you mention the Polititruck business. You know, they you get the feeling that they think you win the war by going and blowing up Germans, not by going and talking to townsfolk. So is it safe to assume that because all the men went with us to the town that they either had to fly or go to town and not both? Yeah. Like, so that's a point I could, you know, like, yeah. <clears throat> you know, well. I'm not asking for special treatment. Like, the men did not have to do both these things. <sighs> <laughs> Again, another heavy sigh. I won't say the men, but whatever their squad yeah, 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 yeah. The, you know, the 586th was not expected right. to. <laughs> so, Lobodeva will... Again, let out, Captain Lobodevo let out a big sigh and say, We are all aware that we do not get the same luxuries, I think would be the appropriate way to put it, uh, that our male counterparts do. But, like most things in life, it is our burden to bear, and we will continue to push, push forward, because we're, we're Russian women, and that's what we do. So, I think... That Lobo Deva is about to sort of like deliver that. Um, I'm not gonna hear your argument. I think right, mm -hmm. and is about to say, "Suck it up and get in the cockpit and shut your yap and go do your job that you're told to do." Uh, but and like you can see that by the stern look that's on her face as she's about to deliver this speech of like, "Get your ass in the plane because I said so." When Bereshinskaya just sort of looks at you and says, or go back to your barracks and uh, tell your, your pilots that they uh, stay on the ground until your planes are put back together. And then just like that, she goes back to writing and doing whatever it is that she's, <laughs> she's doing. Thank you, sir. So you'll see uh, Lobo Deva bristles a little bit at that and then just sort of turns around and walks away. And they'll dismiss you. I'll saunter back. Very good. Ladies... I went to be repairing the planes. We've got a like, night off. immediately after we get the time off. <sighs> I sit up. Oh, good. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I'll lay back down. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and roll me a repair there, Vera. Roll plus skill. Which plane are you working on first before you roll? Uh, There's tail number 13. I don't think either one of them have a name. There's 13, 013, and 183, I believe. I would like to work on both. I would like to spend one as my personal action and one as my regimental action. Okay. So, uh, I'll start with zero one three. Okay, so go ahead and roll plus skill. Eight. So on an eight, I think it's choose. Choose oh. one. Choose two. Yeah. So you patch it back together, but choose two. It acquires a personality if it doesn't have one already. Okay. Since it's number thirteen. No, I don't know. Uh, personality. Personality. This was the plane. Who was in this plane last trip? Me, Galia, and Valentine. Uh, give it the personality overachiever, like meaning like it'll push itself to the brink, even if it means it breaks. All right, so small recording snafu. We forgot to restart it after we took a, took a quick break. But so we had a moment where everybody sort of rekindled friendships and made peace and broke bread with everybody in the section now in the tent and shared some cakes and some vodka, as always. And there was a moment at the hospital where everyone uh, sort of uh, came to see Yulia and sort of... Uh, made peace there, I guess. Not that there was a whole lot of issues there with you and Masha or anybody else, but sort of just putting the group back together again. And then a quick scene at the hangar repairing the plane, sort of showing Valentina the ropes and how things are repaired and sort of her revealing how young and green she still is uh, and hasn't seen all of the disaster of the war that you guys have seen and suffered through. And then... Uh, do you think it's worth redoing the thing with Sveta or no? It's up to you. I, I think it was kind of important. Okay. Uh, you will wake up from your nap, and, or you're sleeping at the hospital recovering, and you will sort of roll over in this half-dream state, and you will uh, sort of in between um, that small moment where you wake up as you're moving around in bed, and you will see that Sveta is sitting in a chair uh, next to the bed. <laughs> That's so weird. I was just dreaming about you. Uh, so <laughs> she will... Be sort of um, taken aback or like strike that doesn't know how to react to that, 
and sort of looks at you like, I don't know what to say next. That's kind of a weird moment there. You're much and, prettier when you're not in that uniform. <laughs> I'm in in other clothes. Other, in other clothes. That escalated quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she will just sort of... So she will look at you with this <laughs> sort of, like, strange look. Like, she doesn't know how to take what you're saying right now. Like, has this sort of... Um, so, yeah, she, I think that she just sort of um, doesn't even acknowledge the fact that you say that and moves right on past it like it wasn't even a thing. And she says that... Nothing's got a twitch. Does she blush? Uh... <laughs> These are important. I think uh, she, her... So her truck facade will will have the faintest of cracks in it for a minute. And I don't think she blushes, but I think, like, it's that moment, like, when your ears turn red... Do you know what I'm saying for a minute? And uh, then uh, just just that fast, it's it's gone and back to this that the the stoic uh, politic truck officer that you know. And she says, sort of looks down at you sternly and says, "I understand that uh, you and the rest of your squadron won't be in the air tonight." Yes, that's correct. And she says, "Do you think that's wise?" Yes, I say it without question in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yes and uh why now why this time we have two injured pilots and two damaged planes and have had very little sleep and have spent all day gallivanting about the town schmoozing she says you guys have flown under oh. worse conditions and not missed mm-hmm. a night before you've never missed an emission so why what's so different about today what uh, what condition have we flown in that's been worse than this when you were at Trudgornyaka, the uh, many times uh, the circumstances were just as bad, if not worse. It may not have been you as banged up, but there were those among your squadron that were in the plane that were just as injured, if not, you know, as injured as you are now, very nearly the same amount of, of injury. One person, uh, not, not two. I've never sent a severely injured pilot back into the air. Not once. Are, are we the only squadron that's ever asked for a night off? No, you're definitely not. But it does seem out of character for you and the rest of your squadron, uh, which is what brings me here now. What is so different here at Pash, Pashkovskaya that was not present at Tredgornyaka? There's, there's nothing different here. We just have had no sleep, have damaged planes, and injured pilots. I think that uh, she sort of stands up and uh, she she looks away for a moment and her eyes narrow like she sees something. And uh, at that point, she will. She says that I have been with you guys or been with the 588 uh, since the beginning, essentially. And your squadron has never asked for a night off, never asked to have uh, easy missions never asked for anything other than planes that run and bombs to drop. And she will sort of reach out and uh, put her hand on your shoulder and say, I think that you've uh, made the right decision, but it's important for you to know that you don't get many nights like this and that you should use these wisely. And then she will turn to walk away as you hear people coming down the the corridor, the hallway, uh, and and she will sort of, um, yeah, you know, stand there for a minute, sort of awkward, not knowing what to say, and she will again sort of look down the way and see that there are uh, there's someone coming, and just sort of say yeah, and she will turn on her heel and walk away. It was much better the first time around, but whatever, it's all right. That happens. Yeah. But we are definitely recording this time, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so then day phase. Weird. <laughs> right? All right. So you guys will finish up with the repairs at the hangar. And as you guys come walking out right on cue from our missed outburst from Vera, Vera Sveta will have her eyes sort of locked on Vera as you guys come walking out of the hangar. And she will come walking up towards you. And sort of stop as you, you like, you know, letting you take the last few steps towards her. And she says, no, go ahead. No, I'm not saying anything. (laughs) She will, like, look at you with this very, a very icy, steely look. And 
in fact, I think you guys will notice that her her hand like she stands there for a moment and her her hands ball they stay at her sides, but they her hands sort of ball up into fists. And she says, We need to have a very serious discussion about your desire to stay here. And she will look at the rest of you guys and be like, uh, the rest of you can uh head back to the barracks or whatever it is that you're you're doing with your time off. I was really hoping you'd have me fly with another squadron. Oh, that's that's not happening. And then after drinking with a batch of people in town, did you think I was so foolish as to not smell alcohol on you when you got back in the truck right in front of me? You told us. Walk. I walk. All right, so she will walk you, sort of like parading you across the uh, the the camp or whatever, so to speak, right, to uh, one of the, the command building or whatever, right? And uh, you guys will walk inside, sort of out of out of uh, out of sight of everybody else, you know. And I, I I think it's that moment where you guys are like walking away because you're like, I don't want to be in trouble, but you know, <laughs> looking <laughs> and listening over Just your shoulder. Walk a little, yeah, yeah, a like little walking slow, sure slow okay. and being like, oh. and she will walk you back into like what you know to be one of the interrogation rooms, essentially, like. It's very recognizable for what it is. There's like a plain brown wooden table with two chairs and then a chair across from it and like a lonely, you know, light that hangs from the ceiling above it. And she uh, walks you in there. I'll walk in. So she will close the door behind her and she points at the seat. I'm going to sit down. So she will sort of like walk over others like... Papers and stuff are already on the table or whatever, you know. And she walks over and sort of sits down on the edge of the table and just stares at you with that icy, steely look that she has or whatever. Is this a formal or an informal interview? She sort of, like, looks up for a minute. She's like, I don't even know what I should be doing with you. I'll stand up. I was following orders. I'll walk up to her. I'm going to put my hand on her leg. Whoa. You told us. To go in there and make the army look Do you think that's going to go as well anytime any other airwoman walks in there to have a drink with them? No, but I'm not just any airwoman. And there's a reason you picked us to go into town and not just any other airwoman. Had you worried about it, you would have left, you would have put it on a list of things that we were not allowed to do. You are always clear and direct with your orders. I don't know what happened. I was sleeping the whole time. <laughs> so <sighs> she, she sort of like looks at you and says... That much is 100% accurate. I am always very clear with my orders. She kind of, like, looks, like, thinking back knowingly. Do you know what I mean? Like, fair enough, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, one of those things, like, touche. And you gave us the additional order of looking for suspicious activity. Suspicious activity doesn't happen in a street. It happens behind closed doors. <laughs> and when people have their guard down. And when people have their guard down. <laughs> so... She will smirk a little bit at that and says, um, do you think that's why I brought you in here to talk about some alcohol that you drank at a bar or that you have stashed in your footlocker? There's not a whole lot of it left anymore. <laughs> <laughs> says, I know. I was sitting in the chair. So why'd you bring me in here? Well, so she will like puts her hand on the table on top of the stack of papers, you know, that's there. And she, like, sort of taps her finger on the table. I brought you here because of uh, paperwork. Do I have to take care of paperwork again? She will just, like, sort of smile at you. All right, so uh, you guys will head back to your guys' barracks, right? I'm already there. She's already there. Okay. So oh, yeah, okay. So you guys will arrive back there. Is there anything that you guys are planning or are you guys taking it easy, like, actually trying to get some real R&R? &R? Well, you guys don't have to fly tonight, or... Oh, no, I'm, I think, a little concerned, because Vera got pulled <laughs> off. So I'm going to wake Galia up and be like, Galia. Huh? Um, so we were visiting Yulia, and when we left, Spetta took Vera off in, into the... Um, when you left... Administrative when you left building. After we, after we left the hangar, I'm sorry. We left the hangar, and Spetta was there, and she took Vera off into the administration building. Why? What We're did you sure. do? We didn't do anything. I told you what I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vera. So yeah, she, yeah. We didn't do anything. Vera went to the bar when we went to town. 
Okay. So maybe she's, I don't know. She's, she took her in there and she's not out yet. How Just long has she been worried. in there? I'll set up. All right. An hour? Well, if we go poking around and tell us that we're not using our off wisely. And Vera just came back. So what could she have, could she really be in that much trouble for going to a bar? And they never told us specifically not to go to bars. They told us to talk to everybody in the town, right? They did. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens, but... I mean, we're not not allowed to go to bars, technically. <laughs> we're not, not, not allowed to not. Why did you do that, Vera? You didn't tell me I couldn't. <laughs> That's why. Duh. I'm such a teenager. Um, <laughs> duh. I mean, not duh. I think it'll be fine. They're probably just going to give her a slap on the wrist. They know that we do our jobs and we do them well. And Vera just got back, so maybe they're just making sure she's focused. I hope so. It'll be fine. I'm going to go sleep now. Okay, I'll let you know what happens. Uh, it's gonna be fine. Just don't don't worry about it. I'll give you a hug. It's okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to bed now. All right. So I think that uh, Sveta is sort of uh, leaving the room, right? And she, after after everything or whatever, you know, and she points at the uh, papers, the official interview paperwork or whatever. And she says you should probably fill one of those out for why you why you were in here. I'll make sure it gets filed. Okay. And uh, she goes and she grabs the handle of the door, the door handle, you know. She goes to open it. She's like, uh, I also think it would be a good idea if you didn't talk with that captain anymore. Which captain? Ruslan. <laughs> That's why she got in trouble. <laughs> Is that why you called me in here? The, oh, okay. Sorry. No. Okay. So she will uh, open the door and leave. A lot of paperwork. All right, so there's like it's not it's papers that you've seen them fill out, but you've never actually filled out before, and it's basically an interview paperwork about what the interview is about or whatever, and it's got her, she's already signed the bottom of it okay. as the interviewer or whatever it is. I'll fill it in. I'll put in um uh to find out if I had learned anything when I was in the bar and to reprimand me for doing something like that, and I'll okay. fill that all out. So. I was in here to see if I learned anything. No suspicious activity was taking place in the bar. She didn't see that I was lying in any way about that. She reprimanded me for drinking because a Soviet air woman should know better. Right. Very good. I'll fold it up and walk out. So you'll feel a lot of eyes on you as you leave the the interrogation room, so to speak, right? So it's about about an hour of time. Where an hour has passed, as uh, Dasha said, as you, as you leave. It's oh, okay. did it fade to black? Yeah. yeah, I'm okay. sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I thought it should have been. It was. I clear. thought it was obvious, but then I was like, "Wait, did it?" Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. there was a there was a fade to black moment that happened, and uh, yeah. Okay. So that's all I need to know. You guys will come back, or not? You guys. You guys are already there, and then unless unless anyone is doing anything particular, eventually uh, Vera will come back. You'll get discharged from the hospital that evening. Beautiful. Hair looks good. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful for the front, <laughs> but yeah, nonetheless. <laughs> I'm gonna climb in my head. All right, so we, I think we can move through a quiet night phase. If you guys aren't, if there's nothing significant planned, I mean, you guys have had your bonding moment. It's sort of this weird time of where you guys don't have to do anything. Do you know what I mean? And it's awkward, and like you guys know that there are people out fighting and being shot at and all that kind of stuff, and uh, anxious moments waiting to hear planes coming back towards the runway. You know, wanting to be in the air, but not at the same time. It's lots of conflict. And then we can move into another day phase, I think, if there's, if that works for you guys. Mm -hmm. All right, so your, your first night off and you guys sleep easy, if not restless, until it's sort of uneasy until you hear the planes come landing back again. And there's sort of uh, some relief of guilt as you guys hear the planes land and whatnot and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to go to the runway to help repair any planes so that the girls can just go to bed, like... Right. We'll take care of your plan repairing duty because we had to take the night off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that eases uh, things a little bit with the other sections that, you know, you're stepping up now to sort of try and help them where you can or whatever and, and uh, stow their planes away and do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, unless there's anything you guys have uh, specific for the this day cycle. I have a new plan of mischief. Also, do I heal this one last harm during the day or no? Um... 
No, I'm going to say no because of how injured you were. You still have one on you. Okay. Because three was pretty significant, right? It's pretty near death, I guess. So we'll just say that you can heal those two, but you still have the one. I have a plan for new mischief. Okay. What is that? Okay. So nothing brings people together like contraband. And so with my expert creative skills uh, and drawing combined... I'm going to start publishing short chapters of smut and hiding them for people to read. <laughs> yes! In the toilet. That's the best place. Oh, you pass right. stuff to me, I give it to the cook, he puts it in the mix. Yeah, I put bathrooms. my name on it, but. Oh, yeah, not... no, no, I Can you draw me like one of your. <laughs> wait, wait, but you can like one of your French ladies. You have to change up your drawings and they can't look like our planes. It'll be mostly written material with the occasional, you know, smoochy sketch. Loosely inspired by people I know. <laughs> okay, so. Drawings and smut, then. I think this is definitely acting up. <laughs> and uh, this is definitely acting like a hooligan. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the choices on here is to make someone do what you want. So, like, well, I guess go ahead and roll. She wants a rash of masturbation to happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Thanks for listening. This has been an episode of Just One More Fix. Music has been provided by Kevin McLeod. You can find him at incompetech.com. You can support us at patreon.com slash justonemorefix or follow us on Twitter at justonemorefix. 